Hi and welcome to this video on naming and drawing branch chain alkanoic or carboxylic acids. You should remember the carboxylic acid family from last year in National 5 where we looked at this functional group, the carboxyl group. It's always found on the end carbon of a chain and last year we looked purely at straight chain carboxylic acids where you counted the number of carbons and put oic acid onto the end of the alkane name. However, this year we're going to take it further and have a look at branch chain carboxylic acids. The steps are quite similar that you have followed before, so you need to look for the longest chain containing the carboxyl group, remembering it's always on the end carbon. So for us it's this one here, where we have four carbons, so that's going to be named after butane. So we're going to have butanoic acid. No need to put in the number for where the acid is, it's always on number one. But we do need to number the chain so that we can put in where our branches are. So we have one, two, three, four here. On the third carbon, we have a methyl group. So this is our only branch. If we did have more than one branch, we'd either have to use the di and tri prefixes for, for the same branches or name alphabetically. So for the full name, we will have three methyl butanoic acid. So that's the full name for this particular molecule. I've got two examples here for you to try, so if you pause the video, have a try answering them and then start up again and I'll show you how to name them. So for the first example, we're having a look at this molecule and we need to find our longest chain. So we're starting from the carboxyl group, so one, two, three, four, five. We do have two other chains available here, this one and this one, but they both only contain four carbons. So if we circle our middle chain here of the five carbons, then it's going to be based on pentanoic acid. We're then going to number the chain from the end where we have the carboxyl group. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And this allows us to look at our two branches. We've got two branches here that are identical, both methyls. So we're going to have dimethyl. But we need to specify where each of them are on the chain. So they're both on number three. And because we have a di, that means you need to include two numbers. So just because the numbers are the same doesn't mean you just write it down once. So we have 3,3-dimethyl pentanoic acid. This was the second example that I gave you. So again, you're just counting to find the longest chain. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So longest one here is again butanoic acid through the middle there. Number the chain, always starting from the end with the carboxyl. So one, two, three, four, and then have a look at the branches that you have. So again, we've got two branches, both of them the same. So it's going to be a dimethyl again. But this time the two methyl groups are present on different carbons. So we've got two and three. So we'll have two, three, dimethyl butanoic acid. Right, in our next example, I'm going to show you how we can go from a name to a structure. So here we're looking at 4,4-dimethylhexanoic acid. So we're going to start from the end of the name, hexanoic acid. So this tells us we need to have six carbons in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six. As it's an alkanoic acid, we need to put the carboxyl group onto the first carbon. There's our carboxyl group on carbon number one. We've then got 4,4-dimethylhexanoic acid. So you need to find the fourth carbon. So if this is number one, two, three, four, and we've got two methyl groups, so one above and one below. You would then go around and fill in the rest of the hydrogens, making sure that each carbon has four bonds. So the carbon which contains the carboxyl group already has four bonds, so it doesn't need to have anything else added onto it. So that's the full structure for this example. In our final example, it's quite a large one, so we're looking at octanoic acid, which has eight carbons. And 
and obviously with it being a carboxylic acid we need to have our carboxyl group on carbon number one. We have two branches, this time we've got a propyl branch and an ethyl branch. So an ethyl branch contains two carbons and a propyl branch contains three carbons. So the propyl branch is on number five, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. And for ease I'm going to write this as shortened, so we're going to have C3H7. On the fourth carbon we also have an ethyl branch, so it's C2H5. You would then go in and fill in the rest of the hydrogens, ensuring everything has four bonds around it. Now, just as you would for the alkanes and the alkanol families, you should be able to write these out as short and structural formula as well. So if you are a little unsure about that, you can go back and have a look at the short and structural formula video from National 5. The exact same rules apply to that as to the carboxylic acids or the branch chain alkanols as well. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe or to follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for updates on when videos are released. Thank you.